Where do you see the real Australia? The one that's been here for 40,000 years. I want you to teach both species a new language. My mom died in a car accident. That's when Katie stopped talking. My ma's a tutor for a girl who can't speak. You her sister? Yeah. I think Katie's ready to go back to school. Visit couldn't hurt. As a student. I wish they'd stop that. That's Delbert. Different whistles, but it's hard to tell them apart visually. Oh, Slim has a nose like Frosty. Frosty? Oh. Uh. Longer whistle pattern, white nose. Slim. All right. Easy enough. The idea is to get them to respond to their own whistle pattern, then get them to follow a command specifically for them. This is incredible. These guys are fast. Where do you go, Delbert? That was my next guess. Oh, the edge of the pleats. No, you look cute. And in honor of your first day, breakfast with David. Quite a spread, huh? A slice of bananas myself. Ah, uh, your napkin. So, you nervous? Well, it couldn't be any worse than my first day. At least the teacher won't make you play rugby. I think. Uniform fit? 
Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, everything's under control, Dad. See you later. Is that a hint? Uh, 20 minutes? Goodbye. Now, the key to being the new kid, never let them know you're American. And don't behave like me. And try, try not to befriend anybody, because uh, the chances are you'll pick the class of leper and get beat up for being a toady. And don't talk back, because they're still into flogging in Australia. One more thing. Your Southbury survival kit. It wasn't easy getting them to sit still. Two packs of film for that shot. Remember, you're the one who loves school. You'll be fine. That's terrific news, Lisa. Yeah, I'll see you in about a week. Have a safe journey. Bye. So what can I do for you this glorious morning? Well... well speak your mind, lad. <sighs> Mr. Trent, how did you get all this stuff? <laughs> well, I'm a lucky man, I am. Yeah, it's more than luck. Rich is a relative term, Davy. For everything you gain, you give something up. Supply and demand. <laughs> the global economy never sleeps. But I do. Yeah, well... I need a job. I can't help you. Why not? Satisfaction comes from finding your own. It defines who you are. Yeah, well, I don't think I know who I am yet. You will. You're young. Come on. We're late for school. Davey. You remember, when the opportunity card gets turned, don't you be afraid to play your hand. Do you understand? Kind of. I shouldn't expect to win the lottery. But it doesn't hurt to keep buying tickets. <laughs> See you later, Mr. Trent. You'll spend homeroom and first period with Mrs. Boyle. And then? Science with Mrs. Nugent. Then music and recess with Miss Litwin. Um, you... not... not chorus, I hope. <laughs> well, it's up to Katie. She can do chorus or orchestra. Do you play an instrument, Katie? <laughs> she plays clarinet. Ah, oh, perfect. We generally keep an extra clarinet or flute, so she can borrow one for today, but she must bring her own tomorrow. Mm. Or she can rent one. Katie, why don't you go ahead? Take any desk you like. We don't have assigned seats here. Honey, have fun. If you uh, need anything, I'll be at home. Okay? Hi, Mrs. Mitchell. Hi, Anna. Hello, girls. These girls, aren't they, uh... Aren't they older? Well, Katie will seem a lot older when she talks, too. She'll feel left out. Self-conscious. Won't work. It's possible. Are you still willing to go through with the uh, drill? I never said this would be easy. Mm. That's reassuring. Just imagine Katie as she was. She won't become a stranger to you when she speaks again. She'll become a whole person. Morning. Morning, Janet. I should go. I'll watch out for her. I'm counting on that. Don't worry. Every day in early lunch, Kevin? Yeah, I think I got a tape one. Oh, that Vegemite scarf goes right through you. Yeah, well, it's the backbone of the country. And yeah, we gotta wonder about a place that raises its young on predigested food. And tell me, how do you plan on paying back your father, Mr. Peanut Butter and Jelly? I'm gonna get a job. What, giving driving lessons? Armitage, a guy with a mouth like yours should wear a cup at all times. Just a sandwich, Kevin. Here comes the Cape Crusader. 
Good morning, gentlemen. I didn't do it. Do what? Need your reaction. Kevin. Just one second, sir. I have a pleasant surprise for you. G'day, Kevin. Dad. Excuse us. I didn't know Kevin had a father. What'd you think? Just spontaneously generated? Keep taking those stupid pills, Armitage. They're working. Looks like you've grown six inches. Put on a bit of weight. Not really. How's the sport going? I'm trying. Good. Uh, are you here on business? Business? I flew in for your birthday. Really? Sure I did. Oh, thanks. So how are you going to celebrate? Well, Mum's at work all day, so there's not much happening until tonight. We're going to have a dinner party at Mr Trent's. You can come, can't you? Sure I can. Why is it at Mr Trent's? Well, he insisted. Says he loves entertaining. First, Mum invited him and the Larsons over to our house, but somehow it all got switched around. <laughs> That's odd. Mm, must be Mum's cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Still a bit scary, is it? Frightening. How is she? She's fine. She's gonna love seeing you. Huh, I bet. What time's the party? Oh, 6.30. I'll meet you there. In the meantime, why don't we go downtown and get some lunch? Definitely. I promise to have you back in time for your last class. Oh, do I have to? You don't want to end up a bum like your old man, do you? I love you, son. See what you got. Now hang on, I'll try and get this one. Oh. Sounded like a. Max, did you fall in? Mais il y a 12 ou 15 ans de cela. Mais je me souviens mieux que d'hier. Bien. Can you translate that for us, please, Monsieur Lasson? Really? My first visit to Tatarn of Tarkasin remains in my life like an unforgettable date. There are 12 15 years of that, but I remember it better than yesterday. All right. Before you get too carried away with your staggering accomplishment, Mr. Larson, let us address the idiomatic phrase. Ilia. Duh. Sala. Specifically in the text, it reads, Ilia douze ou quinze ans de cela. You translated that as, I recall. There are 12 or 15 years of that. In fact, Iliad de Salah is translated as what, Monsieur Mitchell? It means that ago, 12 or 15 years ago. Correct. I got it. I get it. As you have got it, I'm getting it, Monsieur Larson. Perhaps you could translate the paragraph for us again. Avec 
Plaisir. The assignment is to complete full translation of chapter two of Tartaran. Come on, not a bit much. Monsieur Larson lacks faith in us. Let's show him our metal. Translate chapter three as well. Remember, to convert fractions into percentages, we must multiply 100 over 1. 87.5%. Good work, Anna. Now, Janet. Uh-oh. How did you approach your problem? I stood in front of the blackboard and did everything I could think of. <laughs> Do you need more time? Depends on if you mean days or years. I see. Well, perhaps someone can show you how to solve this. Katie, would you like to come up and give it a try? I'm sorry, Mrs. Boyle. But even if I had a stood in front of the blackboard until I was 20, I still wouldn't have known what to do. <laughs> then it's a good thing you sat down. Did you see how she did that, Janet? Yes. Well done, Katie. OK, class, take out your textbooks, open up to page 107, and I'm going to write some problems on the board. Next victim! Now, keep your head down, just make contact. Watch out for the right wicked spin. Yeah, yeah, everybody's a manager. This isn't bad, it's a canoe pad. Here it comes, Larson. Oh. Yeah! I couldn't believe my eyes when my dad walked into school this morning. Yeah, it's one of the drawbacks of living a million miles away from home. Put on the ball, Armitage. So what do you mean, one of the drawbacks? Yeah! the likelihood of one of my relatives showing up unannounced and pulling me out of school is like nil. Yeah, but you got your dad right here with you. You don't have to take a day off school to see him. Hey, Kevin, what are you doing for your birthday? Reading a book? Cool your jets, Armitage. Just bring in the best you got. Why bother? Humor me. Oh, watch out for this one. It's going to be a fast one. It's a quick trip to the airport, in and out. You don't know Oz. Pick up the crate, back an hour or two at the outside. <laughs> Not a chance, mate. At least Delbert's blood sample was negative. Yeah, he's still under the weather. All I ask is he doesn't starve. Katie loves school. That the equipment doesn't self-destruct while I'm away. Is that so unreasonable? Not at all. Good, because I'm leaving you in charge. You mean after I sunk your camera this morning? That's right. Fair dinkum. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Don't mention it. And uh, keep an eye on Delbert. Right. Off you go. No worries. <laughs> Me worry? Well, I'm in charge. Ditch. Yeah, Mike? Don't touch anything. Larson, your employment record is most impressive. A lifetime of dolphin research. Well, yeah, it's, it's very satisfying work. Unfortunately, my partner and I had a disagreement. And why would you want to make a change and pursue a career in banking? Well, I thought if I worked here that I could, you know, cut out the middleman. Cash in, cash out. Make sense? Crystal clear. What um, entry position were you considering? Well, nothing too big. I wouldn't want to be president or anything. Maybe a teller or a job like yours. Mr. Larson, I can appreciate your enthusiasm, but unfortunately, these are the hard, cold facts. We don't employ anyone. 
not even for a job as menial as mine, unless they have at least a secondary school diploma. Isn't life experience more important here? The Australian government does not hand out work visas willy-nilly. Uh, employment of temporary residents is frowned upon. <gasps> look, look, I'm just trying to make a few bucks, not topple the economy. It's the law. All right, all right, in that case, I'd like to close my account. <sighs> We'd hate to lose a valued customer. But if you insist, you gave me no choice. And how would you like your $17.53? And In 20s, please. Can't help you. Yeah, but the dock, it says. Cargo. You want cargo dispatch, mate. I'm cargo holding. Oh, well, then where do I find cargo dispatch? Right here. Where do I find the cargo dispatch clerk? Lunch. Lunch. Uh, wait. Let me start again. I, I just came here to pick up... Uh, what... We do speak it English here, pal. And I'm telling you, you got to take it up with dispatch. I can't touch it. Be a breach of demarcation. When exactly will the cargo dispatch clerk get back? Give it an hour? An hour. Don't the Yanks have unions? Uh, let me get this perfectly clear. The cargo dispatch clerk just went to lunch. If I come back here at uh, 2.15, show him this docket, he'll be able to help me. Is that correct? Bob's your uncle. Slim. Delbert won't eat anything. He's on a sticky wicket. Having a bad time with it. You went in school an hour when I started moping. You're home early. Not your cup of tea, eh? Southbury School. I've been novel for years with school. Hard to stay cooped up all day. Maybe a swim with his favourite lady might cheer him up a bit. I mean, you might as well do anything. It's worth a try. Some problem? Who's your cargo agent? Cargo agent? Uh, haven't got one. You don't have a cargo agent? Look, it's just a small crate. I need the rest of your paperwork. Customs clearance, inventory of goods, passport. Nobody told me I need... Can't help you without the paperwork. Why didn't the other guy tell me? What other guy? The, uh, holding clerk. Damn it. Because he's in holding. Why would holding be involved with dispatch? 
Breach of demarcation. Right. Right. So, all I need is to get my customs release, make an inventory of what's in the crate, present my passport, and we can take care of this sometime today. Hmm? Do me best. Should have had a cargo agent. I have the clarinet you asked for. When Miss Larson arrives, I'll give her the music book. Thanks, Marcia. Sorry I'm late. It's all right, my dear. Is Katie with you? No, Mrs. Mitchell. I looked for her at recess to play dodgeball, but I couldn't find her. I'll find her. Page 17, ladies. Fourteen rubber rings, seven rubber triangles, nine rubber rectangles, seventeen rubber balls. What a juggling act or what? I, uh, work with dolphins. Two pairs rubber eye cups. Put on their eyes. So they can't see. Well, what do you want to go doing that to a dolphin for? Look, I got the customs release. What is your problem? No problem. Just need to see your return air ticket. My what? Your entry visa expires in two weeks. Now, got to see your ticket to make sure you're not planning on staying in the country illegally. I'm here on a residence visa. You only go by what's written here, mate. Says you've got to be out of Oz by February 28th. Mr. Trent was going to handle that. Trent? Don't know him. My employer, Baron Trent. Trent Enterprises. Better take it up with him, then. Oh, I come here to pick up some dolphin toys. I get the runaround, and now you tell me I'm an illegal alien. Tell you what, mate, I'm going to help you out. I like Yanks. My missus ran off with one. Best thing that ever happened to me. So I'm going to release your balls and your rubber triangles. But I advise very strongly that you and your employer get this visa business fixed up with immigrations and... And Bob's my uncle. Bingo. <laughs> so I can uh, pick up the crate, go home. No worries, mate. Just as soon as customs is finished with the inspection. Take those to holding. How soon can you start, Dave? Well... well. Ah, the body. Look, Mr. Orr, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I haven't had much experience of working with animals. Okay. That'll be fine. I'm not even sure I like some animals. I know what you mean. They stink and they bite and they eat their own... Droppings. Droppings! Shut up, Charlie. Look, what does the uh, roustabout do anyway? Well, uh, a roustabout does odd jobs. Oh, like what? Well, like anything uh, odd. <laughs> What time did you notice the distress signals? When Katie came home about 2, 2.30. She came home at 2 o'clock? Mike, first day jitters. I thought a swim would cheer them both up. You picked her up from school for a swim? Well, when she came home, well, I suggested a swim with Dilbert. You walked home, honey? It's almost like he's crying. What do you think it is?
everyone enjoyed the meal. Except Kevin. Seems disappointed somehow. Well, everyone has birthday expectations. I think this will make him feel better. Looks lovely. I've endured slings and arrows about my cooking, but never let it be said that Alison Mitchell can't bake. Right. Would you excuse us for a moment? Sure thing. You gave me your word that you'd keep an eye on Katie at school today. I don't blame you for being angry. How'd you miss seeing her leave? She left the playground during recess. I was distracted by the other girls. I'm sorry. The fact that it happened at all proves she's not ready to be back in school. That's the wrong conclusion. She was so happy, she left. She excelled in maths, and she got along well with the other girls. She'll stay home tomorrow. I think that would be a mistake. Hello, Alison. Now look what you've made me do. We'll, we'll, we'll patch it up. The cake, we'll, we'll put it back together. It's good to see you. You too. Don't worry, mate. I'll still be able to make your birthday wish. Don't have to. It's already come true. No doubt in my mind, dolphins talk to each other. And when you consider their complex social behavior, it's clear they've developed an oral history passed on from generation to generation. Just like my grandfather. Stories, creation of our history. Handed down through songs, dance, paintings, and storytelling. I'd really like to meet him one day, Ditch. How lucky you are, Larson. You have such purpose, such direction, such a generous sponsor. I am lucky in that respect. No government grants to run out? Exactly. No more of that scramble. I bet you also avoided military service. No. Dad was in the Coast Guard. He protected the coast of Maine from foreign invasion. Thank you, David. Lucky again. I served in Vietnam. Please, Scott, not now. Alison has little sympathy for my war experience. You weren't the only one to ever go into combat. Others moved on. Yeah, the lucky ones. Well, now. This looks like a festive group. Evening. Very happy birthday, Kevin. Thanks. It's very nice of you to do this for Kevin, Mr. Trim. Ah, it's great fun for me, actually. Scott. Good to see you again. Well, it's been years. Seven. You're still mining? Not anymore. The veins ran dry. Kevin, I've got a letter for you. Could be of some interest. Well, I open it. Come on. Read it out loud, Kev. To Mr. Kevin Mitchell. It comes to my attention that you are a remarkable rugby player. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's rich. Our intervention in Vietnam was the sole function of American pressure. Oh, let Kevin finish. I'm sure Australia had her own reasons for entering the war. And for staying as long as she did. Come on, Dad. Just lighten up. We extend an invitation to you and your family to join the Wallabies at our next pre-game workout at home and then sit with us on the bench during the game. Too many Australians died. People like me lost ourselves, our families, and our futures. For what? Wishing you a happy birthday. Best wishes, John Kendall, manager of the Australian Wallabies. Thanks, Mr. Trent. You're welcome, son. You go too, I hope, Scott. And Alison. I wish I could. I can't. Congratulations, Scott. You've done it again.
have your present. Oh? <laughs> you thought I'd forgotten. Sixteen's uh, a significant age. I wanted to give you something special this birthday. Uh, this signet ring belonged to my father, your grandfather. He gave it to me the day I joined the army. Why then? Because I was heading off on my own into war. To remind me who I was and to give me strength. That's neat. Now it's your turn. But I'm not going off into war. I want this ring to give you strength. To remind you who you are. You're heading into some pretty important years. I don't really think I know who I am yet, Dad. Uh, you'll learn soon enough. I'm going back to Perth today. I have to. Why can't you stay here with us? Listen, mate. I love you. And I love your mother. But we're like oil and water. We, we don't mix. Who said oil and water had to mix? Why can't you just be near us? I can't. No, we can't. Want me to do anything, Mike? No, stay put and uh, wish me luck. Okay. Insert this tube into Delbert's throat and see if anything's lodged there. Dolphin's stomach is divided into three sections. This scope only goes as far as a first chamber. And if it passed through? Trouble. Kills dolphins, they uh, can't handle the anesthesia. <clears throat> Better call Hawaii, see if Dr. Cotty knows what to do. Sorry, buddy. Wish I knew what to do. Thanks. Honey. Finished translating both chapters yet? <laughs> yeah, I finished doing something to him. Here, happy birthday. Is your dad coming to pick you up later? No, he went back to Perth. Thought he was gonna stick around a while, watch a game or something. He didn't. That's too bad. Yeah. Your dad's so regular. You know, he. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, my dad smells like fish all the time. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean. Like, you didn't see him acting all weird last night at the party, did you? No. Yeah, well, your dad wouldn't stay away for a whole year and then leave the next day. I guess he wouldn't. Yeah, I don't want him around me or my mum anymore. Well, you can hang out with me and my dad anytime, right? Even though it's not the same. Thanks. Just so you know, I miss my mum, too. Really? Yeah, well, you can hang out with us anytime. Even though it's not the same either. Deal. Just don't come over for dinner. Why is that? <laughs> the cooking isn't great. You're an honest person, Kevin. Yeah, okay. See you later. See you. <sighs> Miss Lipland's very happy to have an extra clarinet in the band. She wants you to practice through to page 19. I still don't know why you left the playground. Your father thinks you hated school. I know, Janet told me.
How do you know? Someone told you? Is that why you left school? Well, I wish you'd told me because I was very worried about you. Sometimes it's difficult to concentrate on work when somebody loves in pain. Thanks, Walter. Good eye. Good day. What can I do you for? Oh, this pack of gum. Uh, that'll be 25 cents. And these mints. Can't shake that Vegemite afterbite. Yeah, you noticed. Because you're happy as Larry. Yeah, that's what I love about Australia. Two people can have a coherent conversation and make absolutely no sense. <laughs> and nothing else? I need a job. Fresh out. <laughs> Figures. Guy tries to have a little ambition, climb the ladder to success, and what happens? He gets a wallaby ground in his face. The only ladder I've got round here goes up to the storeroom. What's your name? David. David Larson. Oh, yeah. And the Yank teaching the dolphins to converse Italian. Yes, sir. Don't sir me. The name's Walter Fletcher. You look pretty strong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not bad at moving boxes. I could use the help. Last week in the outback, I threw my back out. <laughs> you don't mind swabbing decks? No. Working for peanuts. Gotta start somewhere. Hey, watch down these dinghies. Walter, here's, uh, 50 cents. Oh, for? Oh. Oh, for the gum and mints. Son, I'm gonna like having you around. What'd your scientist friend say? He says it sounds like poisoning. So what do we do now? Pray. Katie was worried about the dolphin. That's why she left school. How'd she know Delbert was sick? Telepathy. <laughs> I haven't heard that sound in six months. Good as new. Firecrackers. Delbert swallowed these. Firecrackers. Who told you about them? You got something special, man. Yes, I do. Lisa Ruddick's caliber could really give this project teeth. And she's very pretty. Meow. I don't think they like me. It's crazy. They like everybody. You've done these exercises before. It hasn't bothered you. The woman is a snake. The dolphins can see it. Everybody can see it. Everybody Why can't you? The New York Times says that the CBS miniseries Lonesome Dove is stocked with bigger-than-life straight shooters and lower-than-dirt villains. A major television event beginning tomorrow night, Lonesome Dove. 
Now get ready for the classic outrageous comedy of the Smothers Brothers with guests Phyllis Diller and Gallagher. Next. <laughs>